The first of my three pieces is the title track from David Bowie's record Heroes, which when it came out in the mid-70s immediately struck me for the, the blend of words and music, but also for the blend of guitars, this kind of rock steady rhythm guitar that Carlos Alomar was playing, and then this very kind of snake-like uh, solo guitar part that Robert Fripp was playing. Uh, there was a lot going on in this song. It was, you know, the Berlin Wall was still up, Berlin was a divided city, and the song just kind of echoed with the sounds and the mood of being in this tiny island of democracy surrounded by, you know, an iron curtain. Um, but it was also a return for Robert Fripp, who was a guitarist that I loved and who had been out of music for a couple of years. And uh, Fripp in the years since has, has basically said that it was working with David Bowie and Brian Eno on Heroes that actually got him back into playing music. It's interesting the way the song is produced because you have, uh, as I say, these, these two concurrent levels of electric guitar going, um, but you also have Bowie using two very different kinds of voice. In the opening part of the, of the song, you get the, the kind of crooning Bowie, um, the, the kind of voice you would expect in a love song. On the album, you got a couple of minutes of, of this kind of almost world-weary sound of, of Bowie singing, and then halfway through, this kind of anguished cry of, of alarm, of pain, of, of love in the face of obstacles. And the, the production was really, uh, as I say, quite unusual because they had, as Tony Visconti has told me um, uh, on, on our program here in the studio, they had multiple microphones set up. Uh, the close mic would be triggered by the soft singing, and when he went to the, the kind of the louder, more anguished cry, that would trigger the far away mic. So you hear without maybe even noticing it, but you definitely feel the difference in the psychoacoustic space between that first half of the song and the second half of the song. Now, I, I didn't know this when I first heard the record, but I did feel it. It was definitely like two songs in one or uh, maybe one story being told from two slightly different angles. Uh, and, and so without knowing the actual physical production techniques that were being used, there was something going on in the way the music impacted my brain that was really kind of magical. And then, you know, there's this great story. I mean, there are so many wonderful love songs, and there are so many great songs about love in the face of obstacles. But this tale of two people in the shadow of the wall and the metaphor for what that wall meant back in the 1970s was so powerful. It was just a great rip your heart out love story. And um, it also came at around the time that I met the girl who would become my wife and it sort of became our song. So it's a little bit of a personal backstory as well. But really it was, the multiple levels that this song works on that, that made it so important to me. And even today, you know, all these years later, um, it's not something I'll go out of my way to put on the record player or on my MP3, but if, if I hear it, if it comes up, I'll just I'll get this little smile and think, ah, oh, it's 
still a great song.